Hi, my name is Jennifer Nava Milliken, and I'm the artistic director for the Center for Art and Wood. We're here on the opening day of Alternatives, Form and Spirit 2018, which represents the culmination of our Windgate ITE residency program. What you see here are works by seven artists. Every year, the program invites artists from around the world, and this year we have artists from the United States as well as South Korea. And our ITE fellow scholar is from Ireland. The residency program takes shape over eight weeks at the University of the Arts facility, and artists have 24-hour access to the woodshop facilities, as well as access to NextFab. I have been making videos for the center for five years, but this will be the first one since founder and director Albert Leikoff retired. You can tell from his gigantic smile that he is very confident that he has a worthy successor as artistic director. I have been a curator for many years in the field of contemporary craft and contemporary design. I come to the Center for Art and Wood after working at three different museums in two different countries. I had the chance to talk to the artists about their work and their experiences as Wingate ITE Fellows. I'm Michael Perrier. Uh, I'm from the Catskills of New York and uh, I'm a furniture maker for 30 years. So I'm self-taught. What inspires me in making is design. They're forms that I see in nature and in the constructed world that resonate with me. They often are the basis on which a piece evolves. It's been an interesting profession to be in. It's so off the main track of our economy and our culture today. But it's been very exciting. It's allowed me to experience some very interesting things. I've traveled all over the world. When I finally called myself a furniture maker, I realized that it was because it addressed me as a whole being, not just mentally, but physically as well. And it's the interaction of those two things that I think has been a very powerful thing. I think more people should incorporate those two aspects of themselves in more integrated ways than they do now. The rocker is all bent lamination. You slice the piece of wood into thin layers and then put glue on it. I do it in a vacuum bag which pulls the layers together and then wrap it on the form. Laminating it makes it stronger than the wood that it originally was. The piece on the side is the second part of the back showing what's like on a form. The mirror was inspired by the arches that form the bracket that holds it. They were cut off from another piece I'd done and I had them around and I mean that's how these things suggest themselves. I never really was a fan of big mirrors but I realized that if a mirror tilts you can get yourself in it without it being say floor to ceiling height. The way I work is problem solving. The table was a piece I did in Australia when I was a visiting artist there using Australian woods. I didn't have a lot of time. I was interacting with students and stuff. I didn't try to make a complex piece. And plus, I wanted to bring it home, so I didn't want to make anything too big. The bench is wood from Wharton Estrick's tree that was cut down because it was threatening the building. And they gave the wood to a bunch of makers, not just furniture makers, but printmakers and potters, fire their pots. It's called yellow poplar bench because the species tulip poplar in the old days was called yellow poplar. That's kind of a play on it when I added some more yellow to heighten that <laughs> factor. I'm Cha jong -ye. I'm from South Korea, and I'm a sculptor. My concept is all my works is the visualization of the energy in nature. I thought the shape of cone is the first poem to break through the surface and at the same time the last shape to reach the sky. In 2009, I arranged the pieces of wood in a puzzle. 
this work is not only very abstract but also has a landscape figure. It feels as if the viewer is looking down at the landscape on the ground from the sky. This residency has made me think a lot about materials and technology to handle them. I had never tried wood turning before, but was able to do this at University of the Art. This work is done using the wood turning, and I wanted to create a little forest with a breeze. What kind of art did you do in Korea before you came here? Oh, uh, my main medium is wood, but always carving with a chisel. Nowadays, I use the electric machine, but this time I saw the turning, and then that machine makes me feel scared. But practice, and then practice, I. I'm very enjoyed the, the work. Do you think you'll get one of those machines when you go back home? Oh, yeah, I, I also, <laughs> I want <laughs> very much, yeah. It's, your work is so beautiful. Oh, thank you very much, <laughs> yeah, thank you. I'm Jack Motch, I'm from Sandwich, New Hampshire, and I'm an artist and designer who works with wood. All the work uses wood veneer, a material that I've been working with primarily for the last few years. So all my furniture and a lot of objects that I've made have really featured wood veneer. It uses a technique called sand shading in which I burn wood veneer in hot sand and it creates a dark gradient. I've used that a lot as a graphic element. I'm really interested in creating intense graphic surfaces with wood veneer. I'm influenced by op art, sacred geometry, and mathematics and tessellations. Most of the work in this exhibit uses a particular pattern that looks quite a lot like weaving, so I've played with that a lot. The other thing that I've been pursuing this last year is developing a method for veneering over compound curving geometry. Veneer is like a sheet of paper in that you can bend it in one direction, but you can't bend it in two directions at the same time without it tearing or crumpling up. So you actually have to alter the surface geometry of the sheet of veneer so it fits the form before you glue it down. I worked over at the NextFab facility to use their laser cutters and their digital fabrication equipment because this technique relies on the substrate, the surface that I'm veneering, and the surface geometry of the veneer match absolutely perfectly. And the only way to do that is to make it a digital process. My name is Vivian Chu. I'm from Hong Kong, and I'm an ITE resident this year. I am a woodworker. I studied furniture design at the Rhode Island School of Design. And I've always been interested in dichotomies functioning within a single entity. I like the contrast between organic and geometric, spontaneous processes and then systematic processes, chaos and logic and all functioning within a single object. I haven't had access to a really good shop in a long time, so I use this residency to do really, really technical work at the UArts Wood Shop. I wanted to turn because this is the turning residency and we did get some wood from Phil Brown who sadly passed away so I decided to use some of that wood and turn it and I was thinking of dissecting and shifting and reforming new forms, fracturing the shape and then putting it together again. This is turned with various woods but I use nails and black wire and then I paint the wood black so it has this stitching visuality to it. The bust was made at the Houston Center for Contemporary Craft. I was thinking of internal anxieties and also the Asian mentality of having a face, how you are perceived by the outside world and how you have to act. Your interior anxieties can be different from what you portray to the public. I've also been interested in optical illusions and how a piece can change when the viewer walks around it, so adding in the paint element and it changing while you walk around it. Um, I'm also really interested in making organic forms with geometric forms, adding in this flow and adding in this movement with a repetition of one single triangle. 
Hi, I'm Morgan Hill. I live in Penland, North Carolina, and I'm an artist. I came into this residency thinking about how to lay intangible ideas like relationships to rest and what that would look like physically if you were to do that. Thinking a lot about ritual, using ritual to put those ideas to rest and creating a physical object to do that. All of these are symbols that are personal to me, but hopefully are universal. I've arranged them in a way that they can come off and be held, they can be worn, and you can experience not just the toxicity that has left, but the creation that has come from that, the empowerment, the new life after you have let that go, you've released that. Then I also created some wearables for those moments that you might want to wear them during your ritual. I kind of see this as a, a display that you could have to use every day. Whatever challenge is happening that day, you can come to the piece and say, this is what would help me that day, empower me that day. Some past work more on mental health, their medicine cabinets. I was talking a lot about suicide during that moment and creating some pieces to have a suicide awareness conversation. Saying that it's okay to use medicine to help you because I think a lot of people don't use their resources. This is more of a production line. Cremations is what I call them and I use the burning technique as a symbol of putting something to rest. I've gotten so into the texture and the way it looks that I want to just do it on everything. So that's what the candles and the table are too. My name is Janine Wang. I'm from New York, New York, and I'm a furniture maker and wood turner. My background is in architecture, which really is a background in drawing, a certain kind of drawing, one where you're constantly trying to find out how it is people connect to the environment around them. I perceive furniture design to be a scaling down of that same endeavor, looking at a single person and how they interact with whatever is directly in contact with them. During this residency, I think I scaled down even further to the object level, where what you're dealing with is just a single body part, the hand, and the object was the vessel. I had this idea of the cups kicking around for a while. That's why I was attracted to the lathe in the first place two years ago when I first started turning because of just how effortlessly it creates compound curvature. I find that it speaks the same language as the body. When it came to turning on the lathe, as soon as I put my hand on the first piece I ever turned, knew that the machine was speaking the same language as me. The photographs on the wall are a mapping of gestures of the hand. The photographs are a way for me to communicate exactly what was going on in my head while I was trying to do these. I collaborated with our lovely photojournalist, Christina Tamaris, and her camera to create a catalog of how we express and use our hands. I tried while I was making to constantly be touching the piece while it was on the lathe, taking it off, feeling it, doing many, many iterations and drafts of every piece before I feel like I got to a, well, not perfect, but close to perfect model of the thing. So each one of the pieces that you can touch are drafts of me trying to work toward that more perfect object, and the pieces in the cases are just where I got to. This is a wood turner's meditation on the hand. I hope through touching, interacting, and looking at all the work together, you'll be able to share my experience of making everything. My name is Christina Tamaris. I'm from Ridgewood, Queens, New York. I am the photographer for the 2018 ITE group. Before ITE, I had this set idea of what I wanted my finished product to look like. Previously, the work I had done, I have included some type of storytelling component that reflected on the photo because I wanted to guide the viewer on how to see the photo. However, when I looked at all the work I had done with ITE and all the photos were laid out, I felt the photos spoke for themselves. My finished work of the ITE residents were mostly portraits. I felt like I captured everyone's true nature from my own bias, experience, and relationship with each individual. 
but I felt like I didn't have to play much on the caption part of the photo. My time at IT has been an incredible one. I didn't think I was going to take so much from this residency that focused on wood from a photographer's point of view, but here I am displaying my best photos yet in frames that one of the ITE fellows taught me how to make. Hello, my name is Sean Breen and I'm a lecturer at the National Centre of Excellence in Furniture Design and Technology in GYT Letter Frack, Connemara in Ireland. I'm one of the co-founders of the Shared Access Workshop Benchbase Cork and the 2018 ITE Scholar in Residence. My experience was incredibly invigorating. I was afforded the opportunity to be surrounded by exceptional artists as well as staff, which should benefit my own practice as an educator and have a major influence on an Irish artist in residence programme, which I've helped to create at Benchbase Cork. My research during the week-long stay mid-residency looked at what I have termed residency cross-pollination, which essentially is the exchange of valuable knowledge amongst the artists beneficial to their practice. The supportive environment created by the centre was crucial to its occurrence. Residents cited the quiet of the bench room as being very beneficial to the exchange of valuable ideas. The social setting created outside of the workshop with the close proximity of the dormitories to the University of Arts facility was very valuable. Visits to collectors and makers provided further touch points to share and reflect on one's creative practice. Sean is spot on about cross-pollination. This merry bunch of resident fellows seems to have hit it off really well. I talked to some of them about what this residency experience was like for them. For me, the residency meant having a lot of time to explore things that I probably wouldn't have otherwise. The primary reason why I do it is to have the chance to get involved with other artists that I wouldn't have met otherwise. Uh, they're all kind to me and very concentrated their material and I'm very impressed with uh, their practice and work. There was an actual experience that I had here, a full ritual of me letting go of something. So some of this work is that not only therapeutic situation for me, but I've learned a lot about myself through them too. I felt like we were really closely working together, not enough that it changed what I wanted to make, but enough that I could see their experiences coming through my work too. Everyone was really amazing. I always come into residencies trying to learn from everyone, regardless of where they come from. It's all just a really good melting pot. You learn from people technically, but you also learn their life skills, and you get to absorb all their wisdom and carry it through as you keep being an artist. Michael Purrier told me he loved being part of this residency and shared his insights into how the field of woodworking is changing. I was the oldest person there and there's definitely a generational shift going on and it was good to have that experience of this next generation. I liked them very much. We had a good time. They generally don't identify as craftsmen. They would rather be designers or artists. I think some of that has to do with the fact that they were educated in university and the programs, even though they may have been material programs, were closely involved with art. And so the idea of concept gets heightened there in the art world. This is what's going to be the future. Michael's right. The torch is being passed to a new generation. But no matter how the field evolves, the center can be counted on to keep sharing the stories and art of those who create beautiful objects from wood.